I'm Dr. Lori. I'm at the Goodwill in Avon, Connecticut. Let's see what we find. Little bud vase. All right. Remember, tr they're trying. They're using glass. They're trying to make it look like ceramic, right? And then there's usually this starburst pattern on the bottom. Two dollars for this. They're always a good deal. They're always about. They're worth about ten dollars, depending on, of course, size. But always a good deal because people look for them all the time. So look for milk glass. It's very desirable. And as I say that, look for big milk glass. How about this? Now this one has a texture. E.O. Brody made a milk glass like this. This is an E.O. Brody, actually. Let me see if I can show you the mark, which goes around here, around. So, and it's this textured um, ability, trying to look like stone. Um, so going one step further than white glass, milk glass, trying to look like ceramic, they're actually trying to look like stone or marble. So E.O. Brody makes this. It's clearly marked. $3 is a great deal for this large vase. This is a bouquet vase. Anytime you have a bulbous body and then it flares out, that's called a bouquet vase for a bouquet of flowers. So that's really nice. Value on this is 40 A little different for a compare and contrast from this one. This is pressed milk glass. This is pressed as well, but it has the texture on top of it. So that makes it a little bit different. A lot of people will look. So compare and contrast them. They're both pressed. One has a texture, one does not. So smooth versus the texture. Um, it's a lot about um, what people's taste is, but again, an E.O. Brody is a brand name for this kind of glassware, so I would always pick this one, and that one's worth more money, too. So let's see what we've got here. Well, whenever you see them, and they're in this kind of condition, which is not used, with the green straw still wrapped, this is a Starbucks collectible cup. These are very desirable to this very niche group of collectors. So if you see them like this, I hear going, it's a plastic cup, Dr. Roy. I know it's a plastic cup. And this one is from 2020. So this one relates to the pandemic, which is also important. So this one's gonna be highly collectible. Uh, they want $2 for it. And today, which is only a little bit after 2020, you're going to see these for about $20. So these you have to hold on to and pick up because there's a collectible market for them. Um, uh, similarly, anything Disney. This is not a particularly great Disney example, but if it's Disney, Mickey Mouse, or any of his friends, I would say you definitely want to hold on to that. That's $3. See, this is actually worth more because everybody thinks Disney is, you know, so expensive. This is not a great example. This is probably a $10 mug from Disney. And on the bottom, you can see it's a $3 piece. But certain collectible categories always hold their value well. So. You know, I would say if you see these, you want to pick them up and put them into your cart, that kind of thing. Other pieces that I'm seeing here is that pie plate, it's cobalt glass, and it looks like a 10 inch pie plate. That one has a mark on it, it's embossed inside of it. If I can get to it, I'll try to pick it up. And it is a Pyrex blue. So, wow, I would, it's newer, but I would definitely take this one. How much is this? I can't see it. So the Pyrex mark is very clear on it, and they want three for this. That's exciting because it's a beautiful blue. So it can be a decorative piece as well as, of course, a functional pie plate. Looks like 10 inches to me. So I don't know if you can see the Pyrex mark, but it's right there, very clear. And it's newer, so it's within the last 20 years. Um, so value on this because of the color. Color can command market, right? It can really impact value. I would say this particular piece you're going to see anywhere between $45 and $50 for this piece. It's in good shape. It's beautiful. I love the blue. I love the blue. So that's really a, that's a winner right there. There's a bargain for you. Um, I'm not a sake drinker, but a lot of people are. So I'm looking at this set that's sitting here. This sake set is right here with, of course, the decanter for the sake and four of the sake cups. That's a mid-century modern color, the teal. It's a mid-century modern form as well. And just because I have good eyes, it's going to be, there's no mark on it. It's unmarked on the underside. They want a dollar for each one of the cups. And I don't know what they want for the actual, and they want $2 for the decanter. Um, but mid-century modern, a nice piece. And then look over there, because there's another set 
So you could get both sets. You could have two of these sets together. So that's really pretty terrific. I think those are great. Uh, value, about $40 for each set. So each set, five, I'm sorry, four cups with the actual decanter. You're looking at 40 each and two, three, four, five, six. So for $6, you can make 40. And what else do I see? Oh, happy, not valuable, but happy. Uh, Corel Ware, you probably know Corel Ware. This is the stuff we had in college. You know, mom would let you bring the Corel to college. This is a, that's a happy plate, it's nice. So is it a buck? It's a buck. It's a little high, actually, a buck. I'd say this is more of like a yard sale 50 cent kind of thing. I'll put this back. Okay. Rosenthal. Oh, Rosenthal. Look at this. Rosenthal, beautiful, from the 1960s. Notice the wheat sheath pattern. And look at the gold on, of course, the handle. Nice. Look at that large handle. That's the 1960s. You got cups and saucers. Um, and here's some more of them. They're down here. Rosenthal, Germany. Nice piece. Um, porcelain, uh, hand gilded, decorated with a very typical image of prosperity, the wheat sheath, agricultural. We see these in the 1960s often, made in Germany. And they look perfect. And there's two, there's one set, there's a second set. It looks like I've got three cups and saucers and then an extra saucer. I would think that more of these are somewhere in the store. Maybe they're still in the back. You could ask about it to see. Um, in terms of it, $15, $15, $15 for those. Um, they're a dollar a piece. So for $2, you're gonna make 15. That's very good. Hopefully you can find more of them. And it looks like there's some more sets if you look down farther. Usually sets, they try to keep them together, they're usually down pretty far. So here's a Mikasa set. So there's this set. And that's a nice sort of decorative set. It's nice, looks like a good amount of pieces here on that. So they want $12, which is a dollar each for these 12. And they want $12, a dollar each for those 12. Um, plates, saucers, looks like there's just one cup. So you gotta look around for those. Those, of course, are $3 for each of these, porcelain and gilding, gold leaf. $3 for each of these. These are gonna be $5 each times 12, and these are $3 each as well. So they're doing it by sets. They're seeing that they have 12, and they're saying a buck a piece, so you can get 12 for a dollar each, which is $12. This is actually many people say oh no gosh dr glory don't pass by the custards and the cups you know the custards and the cups which are um depression glass the yellow depression glass with the embossed decoration you even have a little creamer see the spout here uh, don't pass that by you could pass that by because that's reproduction depression glass that is not depression glass from the 1930s that's depression glass from the 1970s and so is the separated dishes that go with it. You could, you know, liking it, sure. Is it worth a lot? Not too much. Um, we see this traded an awful lot. For all of it that I see, I would say 25 bucks for all of it. So if you can get it for less, you get it for less. So we got some furniture, some chairs, you know, you're gonna look at the needle point. Spindle back, solid hardwood, relatively old chair from the 1940s. Looking back at the 1880s, and but look at the needle point the needle points two different colors so what was happening was it was damaged and somebody went in there and put another piece of needle point canvas and then the needle point you see how much how faded this blue is and how dark this is they didn't match it they did the flowers nicely but they didn't match it up so so you've got basically an old chair with a newer cushion uh, so at eight dollars it's still a deal i would say if it were in perfect condition 200 bucks in this condition, 60 bucks. So still not bad for $8. Here's your $8 price tag. Got some other chairs here. We've got some big um, side chairs with rush seats down below. These are, those are pretty nice. And they put a cushion on them, so that usually helps with condition. The rush seat is in nice shape. So that's a nice rush seat. That's a nice sturdy chair too. Uh, what do they want for that? They only want five for that. Wow, that's a great, that's a great chair for $5. And then it's ladder back. 
as it comes up with an acorn finial. And an acorn finial were introduced in Connecticut in the 1790s. So an acorn finial, it looks like an inverted acorn, is very typical of American chairs. And if you learn about the style of chairs, the form of certain early chairs, that's what this is. This chair is not all that early. This chair is made in the 1900s, but this chair is looking back at earlier type styles and earlier types. Uh, $5 for this. That chair is $85 with the rush seat. I'd add another five bucks for the cushion. And then you've got these chairs, which are oak. They are solid oak. They're $5 a chair, and they've got an upholstered cushion. So if you don't like this gray, blue, green color, you can basically get rid of it. You just pop this off and reupholster it. Uh, these, of course, date to the late 60s, early 70s. These chairs are stylized arrow backs. See how they look like an arrow? Um, but in fact, they're stylized. They have that curved rail at the top as opposed to it being geometric or straight or sharp like a right angle. And they're curved arrows. Each individual arrow is also curved. Um, so these are solid. And then this one's a solid oak chair, too. You know, solid as oak. And you'll notice that the price is higher for this one, too. Um, I would change out this cushion because of the pet hair, but you could also just, you know, if you have pets of your own, you could just give this a little vacuuming and you'd be okay. $10 is the price for that chair. If you look around, there might be others with it. Um, these are all side chairs because they have no arms, so they're called side chairs. This is a nice chair. This one, I would say, is easily worth 50 bucks, and these, which are $3 each, uh, I'm sorry, $5 each, excuse me, they're easily worth $50 each as well. So you've got some cool chairs here. And then this one on the end, which is green. So somebody painted a solid wood chair. Somebody painted this one, and they also did this. They decided to add this upholstered. Instead of caning the chair or putting a rush seat on the chair, they put this. This should have been and would have been a rush seat chair without a cushion, without this terrible screw here that's ruining the whole sight line of this chair. And this chair dated easily to the 1850s and 1860s. Five dollars they want for it in this condition, it's worth 35. If it wasn't painted, if they didn't have this seat, if they had its original seat, $125 is what it would be worth. The store's closed and I checked this whole aisle and junk, junk, junk. This is a Nantucket basket. You can see the very, very close knit basketry weaving. That's terrific. And it has to have a solid wood base, solid wood handle, Nantucket. The top is missing, but people will want that. There's no number on it. So I'm going to guess it's a buck. I don't know how much it is, but I know that it's worth 25. And the other thing, oh no, not that. The cat's meow. Not just any of these, but these from the 1990s that are marked the cat's meow on them, right there at the bottom. They all have to have that same mark on the bottom of them. These are historic places and people collect them. They're painted and just pieces of wood. A lot of people collect them and there's a group of them here. Look at them all. So all of these are desirable. One, two, three, four. Check them all, five, a dollar a piece. And then who signed them, who painted them is signed over here on the other side. One, two, three, four. Here's five, six. This one's not in great shape. Six. Leffert's ten, five and ten store. Six. I can't carry them all. Oh, gosh. Hang on. Seven. This one. The old Franklin bookshop. So these are nice. Uh, they, people who collect them pay about $15 each for them. So for a dollar, you're going to make 15, 30, 45, 60, 75. Another 15 is, oh, what is that? 75, 90. <laughs> and another 15 is 105. So 100 bucks if you pay one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 100 bucks to make seven. So there you go. That's really a bargain too. But nothing much else. I'm leaving them here for you to find. Even the Nantucket basket, teeny as it is, there's some real bargains on the road. I found lots of treasures in Avon, Connecticut at the Goodwill. I left them for you.